Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, authorities recovered the body of a diver in Calais this afternoon. Executive Petty Officer Sean Regan with the U.S. Coast Guard Eastport Station says they received a call around 1 p.m. reporting a diver had gone underwater for more than a minute without resurfacing. According to the Department of Marine Resources, the body of 54-year-old John Morris of Cape Charles, Virginia, was recovered around 2.45 p.m. today from the St. Croix River near St. Croix Island. They say Morris did not have dive tanks and did not resurface after diving to a depth of 18 feet. Other divers with him who also did not have dive tanks tried to locate him but couldn't. They ultimately contacted another nearby diver who did have tanks, and that individual was able to locate and retrieve Morris's body. His body was taken to the medical examiner's office in Augusta for an autopsy. The U.S. Coast Guard is conducting a preliminary investigation into the incident. Well, algae blooms that carry lethal toxins are creating a potentially dangerous situation for some of Maine's lakes and ponds. Matthew Jaroncic tells us more. With all the warm weather we've had, it's allowed us to spend time at the lakes here as well as spend time with friends. However, it's also created something else, algae blooming. It is somewhat of an emerging issue worldwide. This comes from Maine Department of Environmental Protection Lake Assessment Leader Linda Bacon as we are seeing an increase in the amount of warm days. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, winter temperatures in the state have been increasing twice as fast as summer temperatures. Bacon explains that climate change is one factor that plays into the problem. All of a sudden, we're experiencing conditions that were probably experienced by states a good thousand miles south of us. She says the main issue that causes algae to bloom is the amount of nutrients a lake has. Phosphorus is the nutrient that limits the amount of growth that you'll get, algal growth that you will get in a lake system. So the more phosphorus in the water, the more likely you are to have algae. Once it blooms, the algae can cause cyanobacteria that if ingested can cause illness and death to people, livestock, or pets. And this is something that is continually studied. There's so much uncertainty, so much that's not known about what causes the toxin production at this stage in the game. We tell people to avoid those areas. Don't let small children play in that water. Don't let pets or livestock drink out of that water. Bacon says to refer to the Maine Department of Environmental Protection's website should anyone have any more questions. There are links in various pages to a map that shows the lakes will give people an idea of, of the risk involved. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. Well, the Bar Harbor Town Council has decided to cut down on cruise ship traffic. There can be no more than three cruise ships a day under the recent plan approved by the council. It also puts a daily passenger cap of 3,800 in place for May, June, September and October. The daily passenger cap for July and August is 3,500. Now, the limits do have the backing of the cruise line industry and town councilor Matthew Hockman says the plan protects the town in a lot of ways may not be the drastic production that some, uh, some people want, uh, but it's a beginning. Uh, it's a, it's a, a starting place to see how these reductions work. Uh, it's something that the industry has agreed to, so they're, well, you know, we're not worried about, okay, well, we're, we're voting to put this in place, and the industry is going to hate it and challenge us. They, they've worked with us on this. A citizen's initiative that calls for a cap of no more than 1,000 cruise ship passengers a day is set to go before Bar Harbor voters in November. Mount Desert Island Hospital broke ground for a new building today. The Kogod Center for Medical Education will provide housing and learning space for students and residents from various medical programs that do rotations at the hospital in Bar Harbor. Often they're doing their training in urban centers and medical universities and this is a very unique experience of what it's like to take care of rural parts of the United States and of course to do it in Bar Harbor is an extra boost. McGuire says the building is being 
put together with the latest green technology so it will have a climate neutral footprint. It will take a year to build. She says this is the first step in a major expansion planned for the hospital in the next few years. It will include improved access and the total renovation and expansion of the emergency department as well as the surgical suite. Meanwhile, residents of Southwest Harbor will decide if they want to spend additional funds for a project to improve Main Street. The town is working on plans to build sidewalks, and when it was put out to bid, they came back higher than expected and left a budget gap for the project. Now, voters will need to decide if they want to spend an additional $802,729. Without the additional funds, the bid cannot be awarded to the contractor. The special town meeting will be held September 1st at 6 p.m. at the Southwest Harbor Fire Station. Senators Susan Collins and Angus King have joined a bipartisan push for the IRS to clear backlogs as well as resolve customer service issues. 93 members of, members of Congress have sent a letter to the IRS commissioner urging the agency to eliminate ongoing processing delays, improve customer service, and extend the suspension of automated notices and collections, among other things. In a Senate Finance Committee hearing last April, the IRS commissioner estimated the agency would return to a, quote, healthy state by the end of 2022 and expected to hire 10,000 customer service representatives between this year and next. According to the National Taxpayers Advocate, the paper backlog has actually increased, and the group also says the IRS has left four out of five phone calls it receives unanswered. Well, in other news, a piece of Maine history will certainly be preserved now that the Ellsworth Historical Society has received a grant to help repair the old Hancock County Jail. The old Hancock County Sheriff's Home and Jail is a brick building built back in 1886, and it is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Officials say it represents the history of both the county and the community. The brick exterior started falling apart years ago, and the Maine Community Foundation has awarded the Ellsworth Historical Society $20,000 from the Belvedere Historic Preservation and Energy Efficiency Grant Program. It will be combined with $200,000 from another grant awarded in April to restore the exterior of the historic jail. The old jail has been a museum and home to the Historical Society since 1979, and we do love our history in Maine, so definitely good to see that such a cornerstone piece of history for that community is going to get the much-needed improvement. Absolutely, and hopefully, you know, driving more traffic to the area, yeah. too, once those uh, renovations are complete. Uh, so definitely seems like a cool place to go visit once that's all done. Absolutely. Well, speaking of cool places to visit, let's take a look outside. Yeah, it's been so very cool lately. It's been very cool lately. Yeah. What else is coming our way? Well, let's take a first look at our forecast and find out. Thank you so much, Beth. And our first weather today is brought to you by Saliba's Rug Cleaners, Maine's largest rug cleaning destination for over 70 years. And speaking of 70, temperatures barely reached 70 degrees today. All across the state, we had a 70 degree high temperature earlier in Bangor, some 60s closer to the coast, and same thing up north. So today, well, felt more like a fall day. We had some overcast conditions, some rain showers at that as well. Just some lighter showers, some on and off scattered showers throughout the state today. Most of it is starting to dissipate all across the Northeast from Quebec all the way to Maine. So all of that rain will continue to move out as temperatures tonight cool off into the upper 50s to lower 60s. Beth? It's a picture-perfect overnight to me. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Looking forward to that. And Alrighty. still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, how the Levant Fire Department is hoping to secure new funding for equipment this coming election season. And Dakin Pool and Bangor will be reopening this weekend through next week. We'll tell you why, those stories, and much more when we come right back. The Piscataquis Valley Fair, an old-time county fair featuring farm, steer, and ox pulls, pedal tractor pulls, truck pulls, a pig scramble, and much more. Fun rides on the Midway and daily and nightly entertainment. The Piscataquis Valley Fair, August 25th through the 28th in Dover Foxcroft. I've been having foot pain for at least 10 years. The first day I put the key boot on, I could tell the difference. My pain level has been so much better. I was amazed. The key boots made it possible for me to actually walk without pain. I can go shopping, walking around the store without wanting to cry. I mean, I feel like dancing sometimes. 
The key boots made all the difference. Very happy with it. Comfort shoes, it's just changed my life. At Bouchard Cleaning, rebuilding and restoring means more than just another job. To us, it's about bringing back cherished memories, restoring unforgettable moments in time, and giving hope when all was thought to be lost. For over 35 years, our mission has remained the same. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. The ABC7 at Fox 22 Ultimate Backyard Barbecue Giveaway is back. Five lucky winners will take home $100 in quality meats from W.A. Bean & Sons. In addition, one lucky winner will win a grand prize of a brand new Weber gas grill. All you need to do to become a winner is stop by and fill out an entry form at Osborne's Plumbing & Heating, Natural Gas, Air Conditioners, and Mini Split Heat Pumps Installations, or the Farmer's Table in Corinna for breakfast, lunches, dinners, and desserts made from farm fresh ingredients. Make your summer barbecue ultimate with ABC7 and Fox 22. With their undisputed championship match at Clash of the Castle looming, Drew McIntyre goes face to face with Roman Reigns. All new edition of SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. The Piscataquis Valley Fair, an old time county fair featuring farm steer and ox pulls, pedal tractor pulls, truck pulls, a pig scramble, and much more. Fun rides on the Midway and daily and nightly entertainment. The Piscataquis Valley Fair, August 25th through the 28th in Dover Foxcroft. Good morning, Maine. I'm Joe Cortez. Coming up on today's show, we'll have everything you need to know for the beautiful weekend. We've had some nice rain the last couple days, but that's going to turn over to sunshine and beautiful temperatures. Devin Biggs will have your full weather forecast. Plus, sports will have all the highlights from the local area. We'll have this and much more local news coming up in just a few minutes. We'll see you soon. Developing tonight, Portland police are investigating incidents tied to a local mosque as, poten as potential hate crimes. As Brad Rogers reports, one incident was particularly appalling to members of the Muslim community. Members of the Omar bin al-Kitab Mosque for Afghan and Arabic-speaking Muslims say there's no question they were targeted by hate crimes. Members of the mosque reported to Portland police that on August 2nd, someone emailed a video to a mosque member of an unknown person burning a copy of the Koran, the Islamic holy book. Someone came to the mosque and then he burned like some verses or some papers of Koran. So not, not just me, a lot of like our people, they're so sad about this. Mohammed Walizada and his family are from Afghanistan. He hopes police find and arrest whoever did this. What's the reason? What's wrong with, that, with him to come in the mosque and then we like we have to respect their religion, you know? Portland police say three days later someone spray painted a threatening message on the street outside the home of a Muslim family. The Muslim community in Maine, one of the whitest states, is already minuscule. And it's just really unfortunate in that people feel the need to kind of show their fear in forms of aggressive hate. Somali-American Ayun Nur says hate crimes like this are infuriating. People come to this country supposedly for peace and security, and then they themselves receive the same sort of fear, fear and hate and torment that they're escaping from. If an arrest is made, the attorney general will decide if these are hate crimes. Mosque members say they have no doubt. If somebody uh, burning the Holy Quran, you know, it's a hate crime. Afghan-American Rami Habibzai emigrated to the U.S. decades ago and raised his children in Maine. He says this is not the first time Muslims have been targeted by hate, and it won't be the last. We have to deal with it. You know, we have to go forward. You know, we cannot just, you know, stop our, you know, close our mosque. Mosque members say a second video also surfaced online of someone entering the mosque back in April, recording details of its interior. And that was Brad Rogers reporting. In other news tonight, Portland's Parks and Rec director says he's desperate for staff to run the city's after-school program. Nick Cleish says he doesn't have enough people right now to run the program, which starts in less than three weeks. He says the last couple of years have been rough, but this one is the worst he's seen. I've been with the rec department here for the city of Portland for 16 years. So I've seen the program, you know, all the way up over the course of the years, and we've never faced uh, staffing shortages like this. This summer, we had to hire 18 staff to get our summer camps off the ground. Uh, and with those 18 staff, many of them were college students. Uh, so a lot of those college students go out of state. We were only able to retain about three or four of those folks to work for us this fall. 
Portland's after-school program starts September 6th. About 10 more people are needed to run it. The Levant Fire Department is hoping the public will vote in favor of funding for new equipment. This November, the town of Levant will have the opportunity to vote on a bill proposing more department funding. If granted the funds, the money will go toward replacing their lead engine as well as their rescue truck. According to the station's volunteers, the updates are long overdue as their current lead engine is around 14 years old. Fire Chief Eric Strout spoke of the importance of replacing the aging vehicles. This community has been absolutely tremendous in the support. Um, we have some of the best equipment around. It's just starting to get older. And we have some of the best trained firefighters in our community that I could ever ask for. But we know that to progressively stay that way, we've got to be um, replacing and looking at what is the future for our department so that we're here five or ten years with the same staffing that we have. With the vote approaching in November, Strout says the department will start pushing their plans more publicly in the upcoming months to educate the townspeople on exactly what they need. Well, Hudson University's Gracie Theater is ready to open up for its 11th season with a star-studded lineup. Headlined by legendary folk singer Tom Rush, comedian Ray Harrington, and the Classic Rock Orchestra, Managing Artistic Director Jerry Meisler says this year's season is going to hit home for many due to the variety of Maine-based artists scheduled to perform. Meisler says she expects this season will be the best season the Gracie Theater has ever seen. Things are going really well so far. We have a really robust season uh, with something for every generation of music lovers. We have theater, uh, we have um, classical music, we have rock music, we have rock stars, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. All righty. Well, Gracie Theater is offering a you pick four option where guests can choose four shows at a special discounted rate. The season kicks off September, t September 10th and runs until April 2nd of next year. Bangor Parks and Rec is opening one pool in exchange for the closure of another. The Beth Panko pool on the west side of Bangor will be open for the last day of the season tomorrow. And the Dakin pool on the east side of the city will reopen on Saturday and stay open with limited hours until next Friday. Bangor Parks and Recreation Director Tracy Willett explains why this dilemma has been worse this year. Typically, we end up closing pools about this time each year anyway because of availability. This year, uh, we had a few lifeguards uh, that had some interest in staying an extra week, which was just enough to allow us to open the Dakin pool for an extended week. Uh, not enough to open both pools for sure, not enough to have uh, Panko open. The timing isn't necessarily unique to this summer, but certainly the shortage of lifeguards has been. We encourage anyone who's interested in being a lifeguard through the, uh, the fall, winter, and spring uh, to get into a lifeguarding course. Dakin Pool requires a smaller staff and will be able to reopen between the 20th and 26th for the hours of 1 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. and then also 6 to 7.30 p.m. between August 22nd and 26th. Well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, a federal judge has ruled to unseal the affidavit the FBI used in their search of former President Trump's home. And the Biden administration announces new actions to combat the growing monkeypox outbreak. We'll have details and more with those stories and more as the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. Wherever you are, whether you're ready or not, it's coming with a purpose, with persistence, with the power to change the way you live. So you don't have to change the way you live. Generac Automatic Standby Generators. Control your power, control your life. Visit Generac.com. Make the most of your waterfront with a Shoremaster dock system from Hammond Lumber Company. Shoremaster docks and boat lifts have been the trusted choice for decades. 
With Shoremaster, you get the expert product knowledge and first-class service you've come to expect from Hammond Lumber. Hammond is the country's largest stocking Shoremaster dealer, so you won't wait to get the dock system you want. Hammond delivers from any of their locations across Maine and New Hampshire with professional service after the sale. Your dream waterfront begins with Shoremaster from Hammond Lumber Company. will continue beyond me. I'll do anything to protect this family. Our family is all secrets and lies. What did you do? If there's a hell, I booked my ticket years ago. Just watch. Monarch, series premiere September 11th on Fox. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. A Florida judge says he's inclined to release some of the affidavit outlining why the August 8th raid at former President Trump's home was necessary. He is, however, giving the Justice Department the chance to make some redactions. Fox's Lauren Blanchard is in Washington with more. The Justice Department has until noon Eastern on Thursday to make suggestions to Judge Bruce Reinhardt on what they want redacted from the affidavit. The DOJ says the redactions, quote, would be so extensive as to render the remaining unsealed text devoid of meaningful content. The Department of Justice is notorious for uh, really overextended redactions. On Thursday, the judge heard from lawyers from news companies who want the affidavit unsealed. Judge Reinhardt seemed to have a very very good uh, sense that it is his job as the gatekeeper in this case to perform his function of balancing the interest in the public of accessing these materials against the interest in the government in keeping them secret. The Justice Department said it could harm their investigation now in its early stages. We don't want cooperating witnesses and informants to be uh, less inclined to assist the government in future investigations. Ultimately, Judge Reinhardt said in his order, quote, the government has not met its burden of showing that the entire affidavit should remain sealed. He wants the Justice Department to submit their redactions and their justification. He'll make the final decision on what, if anything, to release. A spokesperson for former President Trump saying no redactions should be necessary and the whole affidavit should be released. That's why you see Trump and his lawyers wanting so much to see this, because they don't believe there was sufficient justification. Justice Department lawyers will have the chance to appeal the judge's decision once he rules on what he wants to release. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Meanwhile, Federal Reserve officials say their attempts to cool the economy might be working as some industries show signs of slowing down, but they warn inflation could still remain uncomfortably high. Now Republicans say the Democrats' latest spending bill could make the problem worse. Fox's Madeline Rivera reports from Washington. This was only been on the market for nine days. After a hot streak of home buying, the housing market is seeing a cool summer. For the sixth month in a row, sales slumped, dropping almost 6% in July from June. Higher mortgage rates pushed some buyers to the sidelines as the Federal Reserve raised interest rates to fight inflation. I, in the construction industry, and I, I, it's definitely slowed down quite a bit. But the retail industry is also taking a hit. Several stores like Kohl's are seeing sagging demand. They have way too much inventory they're sitting on, and now they have to figure out how to unload it, which likely means selling it at a steep discount. The White House is praising the economy's resilience, pointing to falling gas prices, bringing much-needed relief to families. At the same time, President Biden is getting ready to tout the Inflation Reduction Act, a massive health care climate and tax spending bill that Democrats say will do more to cut costs. 
We face serious global challenges right now, inflation first and foremost, but there's also no question that the United States is better positioned than almost any major economy uh, to weather those. Still, some economic experts warn the bill could overheat the economy once again. We've had a very nice downturn in oil prices, which has offset the other prices increasing, but that those, those trends aren't going to stay. The Biden administration is weighing action to forgive some student loan debt, but Republicans argue that would contribute to rising costs. In Washington, Mather Rivera, Fox News. Meanwhile, the White House is accelerating its response to the monkeypox outbreak in an effort to curb the spreading virus. This, especially as the government's handling of the COVID pandemic is in the spotlight. Fox's Jeff Paul has more. The Biden administration announces new actions to combat the growing monkeypox outbreak as more than 13,000 Americans, including some children, have contracted the virus. It's important that we all take monkeypox seriously. And it's critical that we do all we can to keep this dangerous virus from spreading. In an effort to curb the spread of the virus, health officials are making vaccines, testing, and treatments widely available, focusing on areas where people are showing signs of the disease and places with high-risk populations, including the LGBTQ communities. Approximately 1 million doses of the monkeypox vaccine have already been sent out across the country to be given to people 18 years of age and older. And the White House is promising more. Starting Monday, an additional 1.8 million doses of vaccine will be available to jurisdictions for order. This comes amid a shakeup at the CDC. Director Rochelle Walensky announced a sweeping overhaul stemming from an external review of the agency's COVID-19 response. She says the CDC fell short handling the pandemic, including masking, testing, and vaccines. I don't blame the CDC for not knowing what I blame them for, for um, just stamping out dissenters, putting in extreme measures that affected the livelihoods of people. The Biden administration also says they'll make 50,000 monkeypox vaccine doses from the national stockpile available at LGBTQ events nationwide. In Los Angeles, Jeff Paul, Fox News. Meanwhile, Russian forces targeted the city of Kharkiv overnight, causing widespread damage. The attack came just hours before high-level talks took place in Lviv. Fox's Alex Hogan has more. Any potential damage to Zaporizhia is suicide. U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres is calling for a demilitarized zone around Ukraine's Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. On Thursday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky met with the U.N.'s chief and the president of Turkey in Lviv. Zelensky asked Guterres to ensure security of the Russian-occupied facility, which continued to see shelling this week. Moscow and Kyiv have accused one another of planning a provocation at the plant on Friday. Common sense must prevail to avoid any actions that might endanger the physical integrity, safety or security of the nuclear plant. Meanwhile, in eastern Ukraine, rescue efforts took place in the country's second largest city, Kharkiv. Russian forces shelled the region overnight, leaving dozens of people dead or wounded. Others are now searching for loved ones. <laughs> Many people might be left there. My friend, my good friend for more than 20 years is there. All of this as President Zelensky faces backlash after telling the Washington Post he knew about the possibility of war but avoided a formal declaration to avoid chaos across his country. Zelensky telling the paper, quote, if we sow chaos among people before the invasion, the Russians will devour us because during chaos, people flee the country. Critics argue preparation could have saved lives. Zelensky claims if he gave advance notice that Russian forces could have taken the country within three days. In Kyiv, Ukraine, Alex Hogan, Fox News. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, Champion the Cure Challenge is coming back in many races are kicking off this weekend. And in sports, Orono Boys Soccer is hoping to return to the regional finals despite losing 11 seniors from 2021. We'll be right back. Lamar Jackson leads the Ravens. Touchdown! Against Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. Oh, what a catch! Preseason football, Sunday on Fox. $7.8 million. That's how much I made home sellers in the past two years. Planning on selling? I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one, gets it done. HollyTaylor.Realtor. 
The signs of summer are here. The sun's out for the evening commute. Whistles and clapping echo from the ball field, and a day at the lake brings the family together. Valley Home Services offers whole home comfort, serving northern Maine to Portland. With the push of a button on a Fujitsu heat pump, you're ready for whatever summer brings. Humid days or cool nights, come home to comfort with Valley Home Services. Home is our middle name. Mm, no. What's that? I made this. You're, you're not going to want this. I'm here. Oh, yeah. Eliza saves the day. Well, this is how I cook, so. I'm a big fan of your food. Thank mm -hmm. you. Oh, let's all make a mental note for the next potluck. Noted. Ooh, yeah. Smells so good. Oh. There's a deal for every gathering at McDonald's. Now get a delicious McChicken or a juicy McDouble. Two for just $3.99. Get two of the same or mix and match. This isn't your parents' photo booth. Premier Limousine and DJ presents the latest in photo booth technology with the all-new 2022 Air Booth. Print out everyone's pictures in beautiful full-color photos and have them sent directly to your phone. The new Air Booth is available for weddings, birthdays, class reunions, anniversaries, and corporate events with some of the best, most fun props around. You can book the Air Booth, Limousine, and DJ services separately or take advantage of our very popular package deals. Contact us at Premier Limousine and DJ. When I married my late husband, who was a widower, I took on his beautiful daughters as my own. The chaos of raising five girls while working full-time didn't exactly prepare me to govern during turbulent times, but it helped. I learned to listen and work together because no one has a monopoly on solutions in a family or in a state. That's why we brought Democrats, Republicans, and Independents together to move Maine forward. <laughs> girls! Some things just don't change. When selling your home, knowing your options could make you tens of thousands of dollars. That's what I do for my clients. I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one who gets it done. HollyTaylor.Realtor. Sweeping changes could be coming to the CDC after its director has harsh words about the agency's COVID pandemic response. Fox's Griff Jenkins has more from the White House. A stunning admission from CDC Director Rochelle Walensky saying the health agency fell short handling the COVID-19 pandemic. A new report prompting Walensky to announce a sweeping overhaul. The CDC can restructure all at once, but the leaders have just made a lot of bad decisions. The agency itself calling the COVID response confusing and overwhelming, pointing to confusion over masking, testing and vaccinations. Those policies shut down the state of Michigan for longer than any other state. We had restaurants closed down for eight months. The White House's COVID-19 response coordinator points to the unprecedented nature of the pandemic. Our government agencies um, weren't designed to manage a once in a century crisis like this. And I think while many of them performed admirably, there is no question in my mind uh, that, that these agencies could have done better. The course correction stems from an external review called for by Dr. Walensky back in April. The findings prompting the agency to make staffing changes and take steps to speed up and better communicate data releases. In a statement, Dr. Walensky responding in part, quote, the ultimate goal of this effort is a new public health action oriented culture at CDC that emphasizes accountability, collaboration, communication and timeliness. The shakeup comes as the country faces new threats like monkeypox and polio. At CDC, we remain committed to providing the necessary guidance, education and resources as we continue to respond. Any changes to the CDC will have to be approved by the Secretary of Health and Human Services. At the White House, Griff Jenkins, Fox News. An iconic building in Portland has turned 150 years old. The city is celebrating the 150th anniversary of the U.S. Custom House. It's a federal building and originally served as a, as a customs house. The building is still active, serving the federal government to this day. The administrator to the U.S. General Services Administration says years ago it was forced to make a decision about the fate of the building. Back in the 2000s, it was, we had to make a decision whether to keep this building or get rid of it as a federal government and decided to invest in it. And what you see today is a, has a new roof and new railings and new windows and also a new infrastructure that makes it energy efficient. In fact, it's one of the most energy efficient buildings we have in the whole federal portfolio. 
She says the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act will enable the federal government to preserve more buildings like the Custom House in Portland. Well, switching gears now, champion the Cure Challenge is back and many races are kicking off this weekend at the Lafayette Family Cancer Institute in Brewer. This event is one of the area's largest cancer fundraisers and this year the group has a goal of hitting $1 million for the first time ever. Champion the Cure runs until September 30th and this weekend there are three major ways to participate. You can run, walk or cycle. Each day offers a different race ranging from 1 to 10 kilometers and the cycling races will range from 12 to 100 miles. Every dollar donated stays in Maine to support treatment and research at Northern Light Cancer Care and Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center. It brings tears to my eyes to see people embrace this this event and this cause. So many of us have had um, cancer touch our lives, whether it's directly that we've had it, a parent's had it, a spouse has had it, um, some other family member or a friend at work. We're all we've all been touched by it. And to me, it it continues to remind me of why we do what we do. Well, to date, the challenge has raised just over $500,000. One person has unanimously donated $250,000 and has pledged to match every dollar up to $250,000 until September 30th. A portion of this year's proceeds will go towards a new linear accelerator, which is a machine used to provide patients with radiation oncology. For a full schedule and ways to donate throughout the challenge, you can check out Northern Light. Dot org. And here's hoping Mother Nature cooperates with all of those events so that folks can get out there and do their thing and bring the attention to that very, very good cause. Absolutely. Yeah. And just uh, seeing that video from years past, obviously yeah. a very popular uh, event. Yeah. Uh, so hoping that lots of people and the nice weather that we're expecting this weekend will drive more people there. And with a little bit more on the nice weather we're expecting, Conrad is back with our full five days. Stay with us. Felt like a fall day out there today. Temperatures barely reaching 70 degrees with some overcast conditions. When is the weather going to improve? I'll have that coming up. Next up to bat for the next homies, Luke. Don't strike out this year when selling your home. Hit a home run. Get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience today. Do you struggle to open or close your windows? Are they drafty or leaky? Are you constantly adjusting your thermostat only to have your energy bill skyrocket? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather-tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. Don't miss out. Call Renewal by Anderson today. In life, many things matter. Black lives matter. Asian and Caucasian lives matter. Police officers and firefighters matter. Youngsters and senior citizen lives matter. Think about it. Every life matters. And it all begins first in Maine and everywhere when the protection of the unborn matters. On the Road, broadcasting the news at 6, live from Machias, is sponsored by Center Street Congregational Church invites you to come and enjoy the best festival in Down East Maine. Loads of fun for the entire family. Visit Washington Academy at the Wild Blueberry Festival to learn more about customized high school education. Uniquely you, uniquely WA. And University of Maine Early College. Tuition-free online fall courses for high school students. umaine.edu slash early college. Looking for your dream home? Contact a next homie today and see what's available right now. Sellers, get ready to get looped and get sold. With Next Home Experience, we have your buyers. This is where legends are made. This is the NHRA. The Lucas Oil National Sprainerd, Sunday at 3.30 Eastern on Fox. Happy Thursday and welcome back. So today was a little bit chilly. Hopefully you guys had your long sleeve shirts or maybe your sweaters. It was it felt more like a fall day. It was a bit cooler. We had temperatures maxing out at 70 degrees. Mind you, our average is closer to 80. So we were close to 10 degrees below our average this time of year. Some 60s closer to the coast, so even cooler there. Same thing up north. We had temperatures in the 60s. 
earlier today. So our average closer to 80. Not much of that anywhere across the state today. But don't worry, 80s are back by tomorrow. But look what happens by the weekend. I know it's the weekend and right in time, Mother Nature is bringing the heat. Uh, we're going to have temperatures close to 90 degrees Saturday and once again on Sunday. And then we cool off slightly beginning of next week, but still hovering close to 80 degrees. So definitely have that sunscreen handy and those shades because our UV index for tomorrow is going to be a little bit on the higher end at a scale of around from 10. It, we are going to be at around a 6, which is high. The 6 and 7 means high, and that means we have a 30-minute uh, burn time. So bring your hat, uh, bring some sunglasses, of course, keeping that shade. Find some shade if you get hot and some sunscreen. The most important is water. Please stay hydrated. And really, if you're out and about, just bring a water or two and stay in the shade. Today, though, different story. We have some overcast conditions and a little bit of rain showers popping up here indicated as green. So it doesn't look like we're having any thunderstorms all across the state today. So a good sign for us, just a light shower or two is not really going to ruin any plans by far, but this counterclockwise rotating low pressure system is finally starting to weaken. So it's looking pretty good. And then tonight it's going to move out. So by tomorrow we're in the clear and that's going to continue for a couple of days as our nice weather and temperatures are going to start to rise. So as the rain moves out, those temperatures really start to climb as our dew points are going to hover close to our comfortable mark. So that is going to be pretty good on our end besides Sunday night into Monday as the dew points start to climb. And then they're going to get a little bit more on the humid end as more chances of showers and thunderstorms start to arrive by then. But first, we're going to enjoy the weather the next three days is going to be beautiful winds right now not looking too bad and the winds are not going to look too bad either overnight as we are only going to have a southwest wind at around 5 to 10 miles an hour temperatures close to 60 degrees with that slight rain chances really moving out early in the overnight hours and our extended forecast outlook does show temperatures close to 90 by tomorrow 87 by Sunday, lots of sunshine, and then more chances of showers by beginning of next week. Beth? All right, so that weekend looking very promising. Yeah, really warm. Definitely going to want to hydrate, as Conrad uh, talked about, and yep. maybe find a body of water to jump into. Indeed, or if you're running in Champion the Cure, yeah. definitely want to hydrate. Absolutely. All, All right, right. Well, sports is coming up next, so stay with us. The 201 horsepower turbocharged Kia Forte GT. Finally, a reason to pull those aviators out of the glove compartment. Get 3.49% APR for up to 48 months on the purchase of a new 2023 Forte. Oh, great. My wireless bill just went up. Hmm. Should have gone with US Cellular. They aren't raising prices on any of their plans. Seriously? Yeah, my price won't increase. Well, that is refreshing. I feel like everywhere you turn these days, prices are going. Up. Supply chain got us too. Don't get me started on the overhead cost. At US Cellular, every plan for everyone is price protected. You know, I respect a female entrepreneur. US Cellular, where every plan is price protected. Dude, can you believe we're graduating? And they helped us find a great job. Soon we'll be living the dream. Exactly. I'm incredibly grateful for Maine Job Corps. If it wasn't for them, I'd be working an entry-level job and barely making it. Let Team Maine Job Corps help find the career that's right for you. Call 561-8516. Behind every keepsake, there's a memory. Behind every photo, there's a story. Behind Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, there's people giving back by bringing back what was thought to be lost. The details, the time, and the expertise, all packaged up behind a name that Mainers have trusted for over 35 years. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Skeletons. Six feet deep, like, could have been so sweet, bro. Skeletons. Fasten your seatbelts, call the police when I start to believe. Get 3.49% APR for up to 48 months in the purchase of a new 2023 Soul. One. 
Tonight Sports is brought to you by Engstrom's Auto Service in Guilford. We specialize in all foreign and domestic service and alignments. Welcome back, everyone. Well, Orono Boys Soccer is vying to return to the Class C North Finals, but they'll have a little more of an uphill battle after losing a chunk of seniors from 2021. Tyler Cruz has your preview. Soccer is an all-weather sport. Lightning is the only thing that will keep us down. Otherwise, we'll play. It is pouring rain and about 60 degrees in northern Maine on Wednesday and Thursday, but up in Orono, that just means one thing. It's soccer weather. The excitement is twice as more when there is rain in it. We're all out here. We're all soaking wet. I don't think there's a guy who's not here right now, which, which really shows how much heart our team's got. We actually uh, talked this out this morning after our first session and, that, and gave the, really gave the boys an opportunity. Hey, do you want to practice? It's going to be rainy and windy. And nobody said no. Orono has had an interesting last couple of years. They were perfect in 2020, but there were no state or regional tournaments. In 2021, they were unbeaten again. That is, until they met Fort Kent in the Class C North Finals. That was a big one. That was a heartbreaker to lose in that one because, you know, it was such a, it was such a run for the last two years and we were really looking at it. We could have had it. Leaving them with a little extra fire heading into 2022. Last year's championship game still sting a little bit? Of course it does, but it's always this year. So you use that as motivation come back. We're going to win it this year. And even though the Red Riots are losing 11 seniors and a lot of great leaders, they have not lowered their standards one bit. A large and talented uh, senior class graduating from last year it means a lot of new faces on the field, but those faces don't lack experience. Expectations are always high, so yeah. Many of them, they are working through the summer with other clubs, etc. And the knowledge of the sport is, is there, and the expectations, therefore, are always high. Plus, the words and actions from last year's seniors are what is helping this new group of upperclassmen become role models of their own. We really have to keep tradition and everything, and that's very important to our team. So we're going to follow in our, our seniors, our past alumni footsteps. That leadership wise, where they pushed us to the, to, the, to the points where we needed to be to be a championship team, I think that really rubbed off on the rest of us for the last couple of years, and we're moving that on to the next generation of guys coming up. Reporting from Orono, I'm Tyler Cruz, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. All right, I'm going to give those guys a lot of credit for being out there, but I'm going to give Tyler Cruz arguably even more credit. He's dealing with equipment, expensive equipment. I mean, that comes right out of his paycheck if it gets wet, and he did a great job, had the garbage bag there, so give him credit. Uh, it is not easy. Uh, so, Tyler, thank you for doing that and appreciate it. Best of luck to the Red Riots as they go forward here. And the fast uh, approaching regular season is right around the corner for all fall sports, that is, and that includes football because this year uh, it's going to be a little bit different. The NPA made some adjustments to the schedule that will see Main School is playing out of state for the very first time. Now, on September 2nd, the Bonnie Eagle Scots will make history, becoming the first Maine high school football team in the modern era to host a team outside of Maine. It's an experience that most Class A schools will have this season, and it's the Scots who lead the way with their Week 1 battle hosting Merrimack, New Hampshire in Standish. For now, Bonnie Eagle is at work down in Winslow for their annual preseason camp as they get ready to represent Maine high school football across state lines. We're very excited uh, to be part of that. Uh, I think it's a great thing. We, we, uh, we've been wanting to play an out-of-state team for a number of years, and it's finally going to happen. So uh, we're looking forward to representing both our school and our state really well in that game. Playing someone out-of-state is definitely new. Um, I've never, never played a real 11-on-11 football game against someone out-of-state. Uh, I think it's a good opportunity for us. Uh, we're really going to compete out there against them. So that'll be interesting to just see how it shakes up and uh, comparing state to state, something that's never really happened, at least in the modern era. So best of luck to Bonnie Eagle representing the entire state of Maine. And just a day after the high school football season starts, Maine football will open up its 2022 schedule. And once again, both ABC7 and Fox 22 Bangor will air select games this year. Maine Athletics has partnered with ABC7 and Fox 22, as well as Maine CW, to televise three of the Black Bears' home football games. The first broadcast will come on home coming weekend when Maine hosts Monmouth on October 15th. Two weeks later, ABC 7 will broadcast the Black Bears game versus Richmond with the border battle on November 19th, closing out the televised slate of games. All three matchups will be aired live on ABC 7 and will re-air the following Monday at 1230 right here on Fox 22. 
And finally, since leaving Maine hockey back in 2021, defenseman J.D. Greenway has bounced between the Providence Bruins and the Maine Mariners, and he'll get another shot with the Bees this year. Boston has reportedly signed Greenway to a professional tryout, according to Cap Friendly, extending an invitation for the former Black Bear to participate in training camp this year. Greenway played 16 games in the AHL, 26 down in Portland, totaling seven assists on the year. A Bruins training camp is set to begin in mid-September. Already that sports. We'll be right back after the break. Whatever your budget, we'll make it easy to create the home that fits you and that fits your style. And now get up to 60 months no interest. Experience the choices at Jordan's. Big trucks rule the road. They're dangerous and they can cause big, bad injuries. But the big trucking companies don't stand a chance against me. I'm Jim with Lowry & Associates. If you've been hurt by a big truck, call the twos. We win for you. You don't have to worry about gas prices with a new Kia from Van Sickle. Choose from the affordable 2022 Kia Forte EPA at 39 miles per gallon or the Kia Nero Hybrid EPA rated at 53 mpg. The new all-wheel drive Kia Sorento plug-in hybrid EPA rated at 79 mpge. Or check out the stunning all-new all-wheel drive 2023 Kia Sportage and get the peace of mind that comes with Kia's 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. The best in the business. The best cars, the best prices, and the best warranty. I'm Peter Van Sickle. I guarantee it. General Rental Center has been serving Central Maine with equipment and tool rentals for more than 30 years. Our extensive inventory contains everything you need to get the job done right. Our professional, knowledgeable staff is here to make sure that you get the highest quality rental items to complete your project and that they have been serviced and maintained to the highest standards. Power brooms to get that sand off the lawn, leaf blowers, brush chippers, stump grinders, aerial lifts, tillers, and excavators. We rent most everything. If you don't see it in our online catalog, please ask for it. If we don't have the item you need, we would be happy to help you find it. Welcome to your Family Fun Entertainment Center, Movie Rocket Entertainment Galaxy. Movie Rocket has newly renovated cinemas, and the Starcade features all the best video and arcade games around. Movie Rocket, 268 Odlin Road in Bangor, and at MovieRocketBangor.com. Hanks Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer, with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel, and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to battery power. Everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hank's Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. Home isn't just about looks. It's how it makes you feel. Calm, or maybe even cozy. And now get up to 60 months no interest. Experience the difference at Jordan's. Lego Masters is back. We are going to blow your minds. Vote. Lego Masters premieres September 21st on Fox. Welcome back. Some of country music's biggest names will make a special appearance on an upcoming Fox show, plus a couple of music artists make history, and Netflix shares footage of its upcoming Adams Family spin-off series. Here's Fox's Kristen Goodwin with the latest from The Hollywood Nation. Oh, oh, for real, for real. Drake breaks a record, Knowles scores, and Monarch recruits superstars in the Hollywood Nation. We are the first family of country music. Season one of Fox's musical drama Monarch will feature some of country music's biggest names. Legends Shania Twain, Martina McBride, Little Big Town, and Tanya Tucker will make special appearances throughout the season. The show starring Susan Sarandon, Trace Atkins, and Anna Friel debuts with a two-night event on September 11th. Solange Knowles is making history. The R&B singer and songwriter becomes the first black woman to compose an original score for the New York City Ballet. She created the music for the company's 10th annual Fall Fashion Gala, taking place at Lincoln Center September 28th. 
Another music artist achieving a historical milestone, Drake is now the artist with the most top five singles on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The rapper scored his 30th top five single with his new Staying Alive collaboration with DJ Khaled and Lil Baby, breaking the Beatles' 55-year-long record of 29. Eight schools in five years. And today's First Looks features footage from Tim Burton's Adams Family spin-off series, Wednesday. The teaser trailer features Jenna Ortega as Wednesday Adams, who is sent off to Nevermore Academy after being expelled from her high school for unleashing two plastic bags full of piranhas into a swimming pool. Luis Guzman and Catherine Zeta-Jones star as her parents, Gomez and Morticia. The show premieres on Netflix this fall. I do like stabbing. In Hollywood, Kristen Goodwin, Fox News. Well, a new study finds a possible, possible way to reduce endlessly scrolling on social media. Researchers from the University of Washington created an app named Chirp and asked 43 volunteers to use it. The app worked when the volunteers were on Twitter. Chirp tells users when they've already seen certain tweets and it lets users create lists of the content they are most interested in. It also alerts users every 20 minutes about how much time they've spent on the social media site and asks them if they want to leave or stay. The volunteers said all of the features help them avoid endlessly scrolling, but some found the 20 minute alerts to be annoying. And researchers are looking into the benefits of hugging. Scientists at the Cleveland Clinic say giving someone a hug releases a chemical called oxytocin. That feel-good chemical is what helps you bond with people. The release of oxytocin also reduces cortisol, a stress hormone. A recent study says hugging didn't reduce stress in men, but it does in women. Effective hugs can run 5 to 10 seconds. Keep in mind, though, not all people like hugs. Alrighty, well, the price of chicken wings is now at its lowest level in years, just in time for football season. The average wholesale price for a pound of wings dropped to about $1.68 in July, and the cost continues to trend lower for August. That, according to the Department of Agriculture's Price Index. Now, the CEO of poultry processing company Pilgrim's Pride believes high demand for wings led to the supply and the price of the product returning back to appropriate levels. Well, sticking with great news for wing lovers, Buffalo Wild Wings is adding pizza to its menu for the very first time. The thin crust pizza will be topped with boneless chicken wings. Customers will have two options. There's the Buffalo Boneless Bar Pizza and the Honey Barbecue Boneless Bar Pizza. The pizza will cost $9.99 each at the restaurant. They are available now, but just for a limited time. I don't know how I feel about that. Looks kind of good in concept, right? Combining two... You know, I, I think it's a little, I think it's a little adventurous, a little yeah. outside the box. I'm definitely seeing a lot of jalapenos. Not sure. Not sure I love that, that, but I'm a bit of a spice wuss, as yeah. we know. So, not going to judge for all you people who like to <laughs> dive right in and go for the spice. Might That's be great. for you. Yeah. Hey, it sounds pretty good, though. Uh, you know, might be worth giving a try. But uh, I think I'll stick to my normal wings, especially now that the, the price is dropped. The classic wing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. A little fantastic. blue cheese, some celery and carrots. Mm. We're good to go. Absolutely. All, all right. right. Bring on football snacks. Well, now I'm hungry. All, all right. right. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for us, folks, from everybody here at Fox 22. Take care and have a great night. Good night, everyone. For more local news coverage, switch over to our sister station, ABC7, right now for ABC7 News at 11. Stay tuned to get two rolls of Alien Tape free. You heard that right, free. Finally, there's Alien Tape. The fact that Jolo has not been brought to justice makes me angry. But at the same time, the fact that he has not appeared anywhere shows that he is living in seclusion. The total opposite of what he was living during his glory days with 1MDB. It's to some extent a punishment for him. He is imprisoned within wherever he is hiding today. If Jolo remains a fugitive, I believe he's still in his 30s. He's a young man and he's got a long way to go. He's doomed to an existence where he's going to always be looking over his shoulder because the United States will never stop looking for him. He's going to get caught. He'll be arrested. 
You hear that, Jolo? We're coming for you.